Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna take a look at some common fitness or nutrition idea, look at where that idea got started, and then figure out whether it's true or false based on the most recent scientific evidence. So this week we're gonna be looking at the idea that if you diet on too low of calories, or too low of a caloric intake, then your body will enter starvation mode and prevent you from losing any further weight. And just in this video, we're gonna take starvation mode to mean something like just a really, really slowed down metabolism. It's worth pointing out that this isn't actually how it's typically used in the medical literature, where it generally just refers to deprivation of food to the point of death or suffering. So moving forward, just remember that we're using starvation mode to refer to an adaptation that the body puts into place to prevent you from losing weight when you're sort of starving yourself with a very low calorie diet. So first, where did this idea come from? Well, I think it's most likely that this idea comes from one of two main lines of dieters reasoning. And the first basically goes that people just generally really don't like to diet on very low calories. And so they're more or less looking for a reason for that to be a bad idea. So people have basically come up with this idea of starvation mode so that they get to eat more food while dieting. A related and perhaps slightly more charitable interpretation is that people are in fact dieting, in some cases on very low calories, but still don't see the weight loss they're looking for. So they'll encounter a weight loss stall, or in some cases notice that their weight spikes despite being on low calories. And so if you just imagine that you're eating say 15 or 1600 calories every day, and you notice that your weight loss completely stalls, a certainly realistic or plausible explanation for this could be that your body has sort of switched on starvation mode and that's now preventing you from any further losses in body weight. Um, so where did this idea go wrong? Well, the common sense argument against starvation mode is that when you look at people who are in fact starving, uh, they tend to look emaciated, have very low body fat percentages, and they don't ever really seem to encounter a point where they start gaining weight or stop losing weight. And it seems to be the case that most people who posit starvation mode um, as a deterrent to weight loss are people who are dieting in the first world without a whole lot of results. Um, but I don't think that this observational or anecdotal evidence is quite enough. So let's take a look at what the scientific evidence has to say. So the first study done on this topic, which I don't think would pass any ethics board nowadays, uh, was the famous and hugely influential Minnesota starvation experiment carried out by Ansel Keys and colleagues in 1945. Basically, the researchers took 32 men and put them on a semi-starvation diet, meaning they were in a 55% caloric deficit for 24 weeks. Now, 55% is a really big deficit. Um, just for some context, I'll typically put clients on a 15 to 25% caloric deficit for weight loss, depending on their goal. Um, so 55% is pretty huge. And they went from an average of about 3,400 calories to about 1,500 calories per day, and then followed that same 1,500 calorie diet for 24 weeks straight, so about five and a half months. And at the end of the 24 weeks, the researchers didn't find that any of the subjects had entered starvation mode and stopped losing weight or stopped losing body fat. Uh, what they instead found was that all of the subjects lost a ton of weight with the average weight drop being 25% of their starting body weight. Um, so for a 200 pound guy, that would be 50 pounds of weight loss. And most of them ended up at around 5% body fat. And this is what some of the subjects ended up looking like uh, at the end of it all. But of course there is quite a bit more to it than that. Um, their metabolisms did slow down by quite a lot throughout the course of the experiment. Um, and I think that this is where there is a hint of truth to the sort of starvation mode hypothesis where the body will slow down some of its metabolic processes in response to a very strong caloric deficit. And in fact, by the end of the study, the subjects had experienced an average drop in metabolic rate of 40%. Now of that 40% drop, about 25% was just due to a reduction in body weight alone. Um, so there's less metabolically active tissue requiring fuel 
requiring energy. Um, so all else being equal, bigger bodies tend to burn more calories and smaller bodies tend to burn fewer calories, but that still only accounts for 25% of the metabolic drop. And so the other 15% is due to an adaptive metabolic slowdown. And I think this is the true metabolic slowdown seen in this literature. Um, and it's made up of a metabolic component known as adaptive thermogenesis. Um, so after we account for losses in body weight, uh, we're really only looking at about a 15% drop in metabolic rate. And I think it's worth noting that these subjects got to 5% body fat uh, before seeing even this level of metabolic slowdown. And out of all the literature I've scanned on this topic, uh, this was the biggest metabolic drop that I've seen. And it's worth noting that even this wasn't enough to prevent fat loss overall, and it was still sufficient enough, or their metabolisms were still high enough to allow them to get to 5% body fat. Now, most of this adaptive metabolic component is thought to come from decreases in non-exercise activity thermogenesis, uh, which basically includes any form of activity that isn't formal exercise. Um, so things like fidgeting your fingers, uh, bobbing your head to music, or just getting up to walk around or whatever. So apart from losing metabolically active body mass, uh, the main reason why your fat loss begins to slow down later in the diet is because your levels of NEAT downregulates. Um, so you may notice you're a little bit less fidgety or you tend to move around a little bit less. And this is in large part subconsciously regulated in the brain and it also happens to be very individual. One 2014 paper found that NEAT can vary up to 2000 calories between two individuals of the same body composition, same gender, and age. Neat also, in very large part, explains the differences you see amongst individuals in response to the same diet. In a 1999 study, Levine and colleagues gave subjects an excess of 1,000 calories per day for eight weeks. And at the end of the eight weeks, the amount of fat gain varied from just 0.79 pounds all the way up to 9.3 pounds. So that's more than a tenfold difference amongst individuals in response to the exact same caloric surplus. And the authors of this paper attribute a very large chunk of this to individual variation in levels of NEAT. Um, so the bottom line in terms of practical application is that as someone seeking fat loss, you want your levels of NEAT to be as high as possible. Um, so there are things you can do consciously to try to drive it up a little bit. Um, so you can do things like park a little bit further away from the grocery store, uh, make an effort to get your daily step count up um, so you can wear a step tracker and be a little bit more accountable in that way. Um, but in my opinion, because this is so largely subconsciously regulated and so individual, I think past a certain point, this isn't gonna do a whole lot to expedite or further your fat loss goals. Um, one thing that does seem to help quite a lot though is to diet a little bit more slowly. Um, the very aggressive, very low calorie crash diets tend to be associated with greater reductions in NEAT than the more slow and steadier approach uh, with more of a moderate caloric deficit. A 2013 study titled Weight Loss, Weight Management, and Adaptive Thermogenesis found that NEAT downregulates more the faster and harder you diet. So if you try to cut very aggressively, your body becomes very efficient with how it expends energy, and it decreases NEAT to try to decrease your energy expenditure thus decreasing your overall weight loss. Um, but this isn't the only reason I'd recommend dieting a little bit more slowly. Uh, other research has shown that it tends to preserve muscle mass better. And in my personal experience, it tends to be associated with less of a severe post-diet rebound or post-diet weight regain. Um, so we've talked about NEAT, uh, but I don't think that that alone can explain why so many people tend to see these weight loss stalls or even weight gain in spite of doing very low calorie diets. Um, so I think that there are at least two other factors in addition to the adaptive metabolic slowdown component that can explain this. And I think importantly explain this better than the sort of starvation mode hypothesis. Um, the first is that just in general, people are notoriously very bad at estimating their caloric intake and energy expenditure. In 2006, Mahabir and colleagues showed that 65 women taking a seven day log of their calories underreported caloric intake by an average of 37%. Um, so that would be like saying you ate 1600 calories when in fact you ate about 2500 calories. And that's an enormous difference. And this is a trend that's been shown over and over again in the scientific literature. And I think it's worth pointing out that it may not be intentional underreporting. Uh, it could be the case that they're just not getting accurate tracking information from say eating out too frequently um, or maybe they're forgetting about things that they ate uh, earlier on in the day and just forgetting to report that. Um, but in any case, the end result is still the same. And then the second major factor that could be causing a weight loss stall, uh, despite being 
in a caloric deficit has to do with water retention. And I find that this is especially the case on diets that tend to be associated with higher stress. Um, so if you're retaining water uh, for one reason or another, whether that be your menstrual cycle, or high levels of stress, then that can be masking your true weight loss on the scale, where you are in fact losing body fat uh, because of the caloric deficit, uh, but the subsequent retention of water is sort of disguising that. And most of these changes are acute, uh, meaning that if you are just patient enough with the diet over enough time, then you should see that water sort of come out, and that usually happens in the form of a swoosh, uh, so you'll see your body weight suddenly uh, drop three or four pounds despite being stalled for uh, a month or in some cases more. Um, and there's a whole body of literature uh, to do with this that I'm not going to get into in this video when it comes to things like water retention and the role of refeeds and how to negate some of that. Uh, but there is a book that comes very strongly recommended uh, by Lyle McDonald and Stephanie and I uh, have just started reading this and it's fantastic. Um, so if you would like to check that out and read more about that, I will have that link down there in the description. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, your low calorie diet isn't putting you in starvation mode. Um, there's no evidence for that in all of the scientific literature that we have. And I think instead, there are three other better explanations for why your weight loss may be stalled. Uh, despite being on very low calories. Uh, the first is that you may be eating more than you think. Research shows that people are really bad at estimating their caloric intake and they very often tend to underreport it, in some cases by quite a lot. The second has to do with variables like stress, a lack of sleep, maybe excessively high fiber intake, uh, or really any other factor that could be causing water retention that's masking your true fat loss. And finally, your diet may just be too low in calories, and that could be suppressing your levels of NEAT and reducing your total daily energy expenditure overall. Now, bringing this full circle, uh, despite starvation mode not being a real thing, I still don't recommend very low calorie diets in practice because they tend to cause worse metabolic adaptations, uh, they tend to cause more muscle loss, and in my experience, they also tend to cause worse post-diet rebounds. And practically speaking, uh, for fat loss, you generally want to be somewhere in the 15 to 25 percent caloric deficit range, or if you're going by body weight, weight loss goals, uh, you'll want to be losing something like 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week. So that's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Uh, this myth, I can say, is officially busted. Uh, there isn't any evidence of starvation mode, um, but for all that, you may want to avoid very low calorie diets for other reasons. Um, I hope that you guys found this video to be very helpful. And before we go, I really wanna thank Squarespace for supporting this video. Um, in case any of you guys aren't aware, uh, Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform and they allow you to custom create your own website. And Squarespace is the platform that I've been using uh, for the last few years to run my own website and my own online store. Squarespace has beautiful designer custom templates and they have amazing 24 seven customer support. If you guys would like to get started with your own website or your own online store, uh, you can get started at squarespace.com forward slash nippered and that'll save you 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, if you happen to be new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys all here next Monday.